Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Miner. This weekly no-fluff mindset show arms you with the practical tools you need to get unstuck so you can get exactly what you want out of life. Remember, when you change your mind, your life will follow. Let's get into today's episode. Hey there, friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Unstuck. Very happy to have you here as always and working on yet another amazing listener question today. There's so many levels to this question. We have so much to dive into. Of course, you know, that makes me extremely excited. So, you know, I'm going to get a little amped up, of course, probably in this episode, but that's okay. That just shows my passion for these subjects. Before we dive into this question today, I have been getting a lot of questions about the Unstuck Collective, the membership community that I am officially opening April 1st. Right now, we are taking seats for the founding members, those of you who want to be a part of this community and help me build it from the ground up, those that you want to be there from day one. Now is your chance to be an Unstuck Collective founding member. There are, of course, limited seats in order to do that, and they are filling up fast ever since I mentioned what we have going on over there. Mentioned that on Friday, sent out the word, and a lot of you have been taking me up on that, and I'm so thrilled to have you all. I mean, if I can be totally honest, this is a very selfish thing for me to do because I not only did I want this, and I explained this on Friday's episode, uh, episode 33, not only did I want this back when I was starting my mindset journey myself three and a half, almost four years ago now, but I still want it today. I want this so badly. I didn't realize how much I would love not only talking about this and kind of teaching it. I knew I was going to love that, but I'm really loving the coaching aspect. I'm loving the questions that you guys have, how insightful you are, how dedicated you are, how much you are really taking in what I'm saying and absorbing it and practicing it. And I absolutely thrive on that. I'm loving it. And of course, I want more of that in my life. I want more of you all. I want to connect with you all on a much deeper level than, of course, I can here on the podcast and even in the Unstuck Project, where it's really more of a self-study to do your own work. Um, And we'll go into the difference between the two. But I just had to get that off my chest that really this is a completely selfish thing I'm doing. But the good thing is that it's also going to benefit you all so, so much. And we're just going to have the best time together, no matter if you want that to be two months or two years or two decades. I mean, I don't know if I'll still be doing it then, but you know what I mean? It can be for as long as it feels good for you, which I think is also a really wonderful thing. Um, And I think, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, I'll just do this for a few months. And then it ends up being a few years because it does feel so good and so right. And you really do make the connections you've been longing for in your life. You do make friends and partnerships and you do have that community and that support. And you do love getting this consistent coaching and reminding um, and just kind of cheerleading even you get all that. And I think it is one of those things where it just feels really good and you want to keep doing it. But that's totally up to you. Now, again, going into this tangent, but what I really want to do is answer some of the questions I've been getting the most here on the show, because what I've learned over the years in being a podcaster is that if one or two people have a question and they reach out to you and ask it, that means there's like hundreds of other people that have that same question. So we're going to go over some of those big ones here right now real quick. If you are not interested at all in the Unstuck Collective monthly mindset membership that I'm offering right now, you can skip ahead about 15 minutes and get right into today's listener question episode. The first one, like I mentioned, what's the difference between the Unstuck Project and the Unstuck Collective? 
Great question. As many of you know, the Unstuck Project is my eight-week online course that goes through the four pillars of your mindset practice, awareness, alignment, action, and acceptance. You spend two weeks in each pillar. I give you all the tools that you need to go through that pillar, feeling very supported, knowing what you need to do to understand more about that and shift your mindset and get there. Uh, So that's an eight-week online course. And then the Unstuck Collective is an ongoing monthly membership where you pay either monthly or yearly, depending on how you want to go. Doesn't matter to me. Whatever feels best for you, you can cancel any time. And every month you get consistent, uh, new, fresh ideas and content you're connected with me on an ongoing basis. You're connected with others in the community every moment of every day if you really want to. There's a whole forum where we can all chat. We'll be doing live coaching calls so we all can see each other, or talk to each other in person every single month. It's just a consistent format where every single month you know what you're getting. You get a ton of stuff, but then you're also kind of part of this VIP membership community where you do have deep discounts on anything I release in the future. You will have an invitation to any in-person events. You will have access to coaching from other experts in this field, special things for you. And another really cool thing that I'm doing in this class that I've just been waiting for the right opportunity to do is setting up a charity uh, portion where we, of course, one of the biggest things I talk about all the time is giving. That is the best way to get yourself into alignment is to give of yourself. And so we're going to find a way to create a charity event or situation within our VIP group to where we are giving to others and raising our own vibration, which is a lovely side effect of having a charity function. So those are kind of brief synopsis of the two. Now, the difference is, and and what I've really been thinking about it the whole time, the Unstuck Project is like, think of it as Mindset Coaching for Women 101. If we're talking like college courses, it's the 101. It is getting you unstuck. Now, the Unstuck Collective is like Mindset for Women 202. It's getting you to stay unstuck. Okay, so that's the difference. We have kind of the beginner dip your toe and get really involved, understand way, way more about yourself and your mindset and start doing that switch, getting unstuck, raising your vibration, tapping into your intuition, all that stuff. We, though You have all the tools, you have everything you need to learn how to do that in the Unstuck Project. And it is a self-study. Like I mentioned, you are doing that work on your own, which I think is super important. That's why there is not a community piece to the Unstuck Project because that work, I really needed to break the cycle of us always looking to outside sources instead of trusting ourselves. And so when you have something that's a 101 level, a lot of times it's hard to do that when you have a community there. So if we take the eight weeks to really go inside ourselves, to really do this work ourselves and understand more and connect more with us, Then when we come out of it, we're there, we have that trust in ourselves, and now we can share that openly with the community. And that is where the community comes in. So I hope that makes sense. So do you need to do the Unstuck Project first? Well, that depends. If you are doing this work, going through what we talk about on the podcast, and feel like you're grasping it pretty well, you've done some of the homework assignments, you feel like you're starting to kind of unravel some things within yourself, you're starting to get unstuck yourself, then the collective, the 202 level is your jam. If you haven't quite adopted what we've talked about here, you're listening to the podcast, you know, maybe the ones that speak the most to you, but you haven't really done it, and you're not really doing much to get unstuck yourself yet, then you probably need some support and encouragement and guidance through the Unstuck Project. 
Um, and there is the opportunity. Now, if you do want to be part of the collective, even if you still feel like the project is in your future too, if you do join the collective, you will, of course, get a deep discount on the next round of the Unstuck project. And you can start in 202 just knowing. It's like the same thing if you were to start accounting 202. Before you did accounting 101, you're still going to learn some stuff. Some of it, it's not necessarily going to be over your head, but it might just be like, I think this is going to click a little more once I go through 101. And you can, of course, I mean, I wouldn't recommend this in accounting, do 101 and and 202 at the same time, but with Unstuck, you can. Uh, So that's kind of how I think it will go is if you do want to be a founding member of the collective because you don't want to wait another six months to join, which I wouldn't want you to, uh, then you'll still get tons of benefit until the next round of the Unstuck Project opens, which will be in the next month or so. So it's totally up to you. But I do definitely want to point out that it's, do you need to get unstuck? Or do you need to stay unstuck? Or both? (laughs) Which I think, of course, we all want both. But what level are you at? And that's where you'll know which one is right for you. Now, next question. I don't get what you mean by membership. Well, like I just said, it's like a month to month thing. Every month you can expect the same things to be delivered, the same content to be delivered from me. Every week, every Sunday evening, you will receive a brief email from me. I'm not trying to blow up your email inbox, but you will receive a brief email from me giving you a focus for the week, what we'll be working on as a group that week in particular. And of course, it'll be mindset related, just something for you to chew on, something for you to think about and notice in your life and start kind of doing some things around. And then that will also come with a journal prompt to kind of go with that focus. That will come in your inbox every Sunday afternoon or evening. And then every month, we will have our live coaching call with everyone that can attend live, and then it will be recorded for those that can't, where you can ask questions, we can do hot seats, we can dive into something more specific, whatever you want to do, I am there for you for one hour every single month live. We will also have a monthly book club where we'll discuss that. We will have monthly meditations led by yours truly. I'm diving into the mindfulness teacher world and I'm really loving it. You'll get meditations from me to you to practice for the whole month. And so then, of course, the longer you are a member, the more you have all of this accumulating, all of these things that you can use and practice and kind of dive into on your own time or if something feels like you need to go back to or you want to skip and do this thing instead, you have all this at your fingertips the longer you stay a member. So that's really what a membership is. It's just you have the ability to stay in it as long as you want and to quit when you want. It's very similar to like, I'm basically calling this your mindset gym membership because we will have no problem you know, having a membership to the gym, having a membership to the yoga studio, having a membership to the massage place, all these memberships we have, it's the same thing. It's just this is focusing on your mindset. And you don't actually have to go anywhere to do it, which is really nice sometimes, right? I do want to go through quickly too how it works. Um, And this kind of goes into the next question, which is, do I have to have Facebook to participate in the discussions? And that is a big heck no I'm just not a fan of Facebook. So I have created a, we have a different kind of forum, a different portal where we can basically have a Facebook like group, but not have to log in to Facebook. How nice is that? It is all through the course platform that I use. And actually it's better than Facebook because it keeps things in chronological order Uh, That was one of the biggest things about Facebook is like someone posts something and no one comments on it right away. So it dips down and then someone does comment on something that was from a year ago and now that's brought back up. And then you don't ever see the thing that was posted like 10 minutes ago. That does not happen in this. It is very well organized. It's very easy to use. It's very similar in just that you post, comment, like, share. You can post videos, 
pictures, whatever you want. And so we'll be in there and we will never have to log into Facebook because social media can tend to be a vibration killer and we don't want that. So that's kind of where I can go into talking more about how it works, where there is a um, forum, which is that Facebook group like forum. And then there's also a portal where I will post everything that I've sent you via email every week, your weekly focus and your journal prompt that will post and stay there. So you always have this portal of the things we're working on. Your monthly meditations will stay there. The monthly live coaching recordings will stay there. Your book recommendations and um, book club stuff will all be in there. So we have this home where everything that you we're talking about, everything that we're doing is there for you to go back to, to um, check in on again, to do more of. It's all there for you. So as long as you are a member, you have access to both. And they are both very easy to access. Uh, you can access them from your phone. You can do it on your desktop, on your laptop, your tablet, whatever you want. All right, last one. I know this is getting long-winded. I apologize. As you can see, I'm very very excited about this. And I tend to get long winded when I'm excited about something. But this is the last one. And I promise we're getting into Candy's question. What if I try it and decide it's not for me? Very easy. You just cancel. You can cancel the membership yourself. You don't even have to talk to anybody or anything like that. Uh, Just cancel it and you will not be charged your next cycle and you will have access to everything through the time that you have paid for. Okay, that is it. I hope you all will join me if this sounds like something that would be amazing in your life. I will be there for you. All right, now let's get into today's listener question from Candy. This one is loaded. Like I said, I think a lot of you are going to find yourself in at least some of this. So I'll read the entire question, then we're going to break it all down. Here we go from Candy. Good morning. I have a question I would like for you to answer on your podcast. How do you know if you're following your intuition or if you are following your fear? Sometimes I feel so sure to follow what I'm feeling deep inside, so much so that supporting facts manifest. But at the same time, I feel fearful that I'm making the wrong decision or that I'm making up the feeling based on fear. I try to ask myself, is this just another self-sabotaging deal or is my intuition right? Recently, I discovered I have been using my weight as a security blanket, so now I feel that the answer is to have weight loss surgery. But who will I be when I lose weight? I have been overweight my whole life. I'm confused even typing this. I'm scared of wasting my whole life trying to lose weight and being insecure and never happy and never loving myself. Okay, as you can see, jam-packed with info here. Think We almost have to go line by line, I feel like in this case, I have so much compassion for you, Candy. I can see so much of the good coming through this, so much of your work shining through. You are really doing this work and I love it. But of course, I think there's still more to uncover and you're just at the start of really diving in and getting to the good stuff of what's really driving you and how you can really change your life. Let's start with the biggest question here, which is something that I think all of you can benefit from no matter what your situation, which is how do you know if you're following your intuition or following your fear or that ego voice, as I like to call call it, or the mean girl voice, whatever you prefer. Here's a short answer to this. You will know what you're following based on two things. First of all, how it feels. Second of all, where it's coming from. Let's start with the second one first. What part of you is this knowing coming from? Is it coming from the mind Or is it coming from that inner you? And remember, we just talked about the inner you a lot in the last episode on you are not your body. Now that we know that we have this 
inner self within every single one of us, now we can look for answers coming from that inner self. And when something comes from that place in you, it will feel very different. It will feel calm, peaceful, joyful, exciting. It will also feel like soft and true. And it will come from this really deep, deep, deep place of just knowing and it just feeling right. It often in people will either feel like something warm in your heart or something warm in your gut that is not coming from your physical body, that is coming from your energetic body, that feeling. I am a heart feeler. I always feel things in my heart. It just like warm, buzzing glow. I can't even explain it. If you have felt that before, you know what I'm talking about. It just pops up out of nowhere sometimes. It's the best feeling in the world. And it's also the feeling I get when I meditate. And it makes what makes me want to meditate. I so look forward to meditating. Some days I just wish I could do it all day because it feels so good. And that is when you know that you are tapping into that inner self within you. If it is coming from your mind or your ego or your mean girl, it will feel scary. It will feel forced. It will feel, it just won't feel right. It will feel kind of contradictory to what is really true for you. And it will almost feel like you're going against something. Like you may not even know what, but it just will feel almost like there's a, a, a wall up somewhere. And then it'll be like, oh, shoot, I don't know if that's coming from the right place. Let me try again. You will not feel that contradiction if it's coming from the inner you. Now, of course, you know this caveat is coming, which is that sometimes listening to your intuition does come with a kind of fear involved, but it's very, very different. And this is fear that comes from being taken out of your comfort zone, because remember that ego wants to keep us safe, wants to keep us comfortable and in our little bubble. So when you're truly going towards what you want based on your intuition, it will feel like this excited, confident fear. I wish there was, a, I wish I could figure out the exact emotion that I'm looking for. I haven't found that word yet. But again, if you've ever felt that, you know what I'm talking about, where it's like, this is right. I feel calm and peaceful about this. And I know this is coming from my intuition. But man, that still is like, ooh, I'm going to do that. So yeah, it may be a little scary, but it's this excited, confident fear that we're talking about. Because it's also backed up with this knowing. And when it's backed up with the knowing, that's when you have the confidence behind the fear. I hope that makes sense. So how do you know? One, where is it coming from? Two, what does it feel like? Ask yourself those things. Now I want to give you just some tips on making sure that you are tapping into your intuition and you can go back to episode seven for even more tips on using your intuition. But I do briefly want to go over some of these how to make sure that what you want is coming from your intuition. The first thing, you have to silence your ego first. My biggest tip to do this is to let yourself free write. Get out your journal or even a blank couple of pieces of paper, grab a pen, and just let out all of your thoughts, a brain dump, if you will. I call it free writing, where you're just getting everything out, all your fears, all your worries, all your thoughts, just that constant chatter that's going on in your head that's coming from your ego. We know that, but you've got to get it out because then you provide space 
to let that intuitive voice come through. It's not going to come through if that constant chatter is still very loud for you. So get it out, write it all out. You don't even have to read it again. You don't even, it doesn't have to be legible. (laughs) Just basically rip it all up after you get it out. You're just creating space, remember. Then once you feel complete there, get into a calm, relaxed, peaceful state. If you like to meditate, and I highly recommend that you make this a part of your practice, if you are there, meditate for five to 10 minutes in between the time, you know, once you've gotten that ego chatter out on paper, meditate and then come back to a place where you can tap into your intuition. If you're not quite a meditator yet, just at least take 10 big deep breaths, get comfortable, sit down, relax, close your eyes, relax your shoulders, relax your entire body, and really find this calm, peaceful state within you. And then ask yourself the questions that you want your intuition to answer. You can either do this, you can get your journal back out and actually write them down, which I really love. This is super helpful. You're just from that really calm, peaceful place, write down your question. What do you want to know that you want your intuition to guide you and wait for the answer? It might come immediately. It might take a minute. It might take 10 minutes. Just wait until you find that answer that comes from your center, your inner you, from deep within, not what your mind wants you to write down. And if you've never done this before, you may not understand the difference, but as soon as you start this practice, you will know the difference. It happens all the time where you end up writing down what your mind wants you to write or what your ego wants you to write instead of waiting for it to come from that deeper place. Because again, we want that instant gratification. We want the answer so badly that we can't wait 10 minutes to get the right answer. We just want to know now. Put that aside. Be patient. Remember, we're relaxed and calm. And then uh, see what comes up for you. If you don't want to write it down, if that doesn't feel good, you can also just ask yourself either you know out loud, ask the question, or even just Uh, think the question and again, wait for that answer. If it comes from your intuition and if you're trying to figure out, wait, did that just come from my mind or, or did it actually come from my inner self? Your intuition is going to most likely not answer in complete sentences, like almost never. It's gonna be a few words or one word or chopped up words that then you have to kind of piece together. So keep that in mind. If it is a full, like very detailed sentence, probably your mind. And that's a way that you can kind of check yourself. The other way to check yourself is going to be in that feeling that comes along with it. If it's your ego, it's going to be kind of um, almost hollow feeling like you're not going to have anything that really comes up. And if anything, it might be like, again, that fear or anxiety or stress or like some sort of icky feeling is going to come up if it comes from the mind or the ego or the mean girl. If it comes from your intuition, that deep inner self, you are going to feel that peace, that calm and that clarity. It's going to be like, Oh, okay, great. Cool. I can do that. (laughs) That's when you know, again, where it is coming from. Now, as you can see, if we kind of look into this and this really, I noticed quite a bit in Candy's question, as you can see, it is going to be rather difficult to do all of this and tap into the intuition if your ego is very loud, right? Like even if you try to brain dump and get it all out and 
um, then quiet it. If you have let your ego take over for quite a while and it's very much within you, then it might be hard to get to that point where you can silence it. And I think this might be what's going on in Candy's case. So I do just want to put that out there. Remember, your ego is talking based on your limiting beliefs. If you still have to do that awareness work on what those beliefs are and then do the work to kind of break them up, create space in them so you can redesign them. If you're still there, you can definitely use your intuition and we'll talk about that, but just know that you might have a little bit more resistance to work through before you get in to that inner being and get the answers from that. Okay, we got to still work on that awareness first and foremost, and we'll talk about that more specifically in Candy's case in just a second. First, I want to address the question of can you make up the feeling of knowing, which is, I think, where Candy really is right now. She's like, I think that was my intuition, but then am I just making that up because that's what I want or that's what my ego wants? Like, what's going on here? Yes, you can absolutely make up that feeling. Your mind or ego or mean girl can definitely convince you that you're quote unquote knowing. It is a very tricky thing. Our egos are very convincing and they're very strong when they want to be and they're a little bit... um conniving almost. And again, especially if it's still a very prominent part of your being, that ego, if you're still in that portion where you're building awareness around what your ego is telling you and all the stories it's created for you over the years, then it's still really loud and it's still going to be your prominent voice and it's going to still act like your intuition and that quote unquote knowing. So again, go back to how it feels. Does it come with that peace, calm and clarity? And then I think another really wonderful thing about taking this practice and doing it to tap into your intuition, when you're done with that practice, how does it feel when you leave? Do you feel like you just know everything is going to be okay because that is your intuition. Your intuition will always let you know that everything is going to be okay. Everything is fine. Everything is exactly as it should be. Your intuition will let you know that. And so if you do this practice and you don't leave the practice with this sense of man, everything is good, then your ego is still getting involved and still convincing you to go the route that it wants to take. Okay, now let's get into Candy's situation more specifically. And the two things that I really want to point out is that she has done the work, which is so great, to find out that weight has always been her security blanket and that now she feels the next course of action is to have surgery. And this, she thinks, is coming from her intuition and she wants to know if that's actually true. And then another thing that really stuck out to me is when she says that she doesn't know who she'll be when she loses the weight because she's been overweight her whole life. So she doesn't, she's almost like has that fear of what's going to happen when this new me, quote unquote, new me comes out. Here's my first thought here for Candy. There is still a lot of mental muck for you to go through here before you can be confident that you're truly hearing from your intuition. As we just went over, it may you may even think it's your intuition. It may be your ego acting in disguise, which I think is really what has been going on here. And I'm so 
so proud of the work that you have done to even realize that you've been using weight as a security blanket. I cannot tell you the amount of women who are walking around right now who don't know that about themselves. And that's really been guiding their lives and their choices for years and years and years. And they keep coming up against a wall every time they do try to diet or go to the gym or whatever to lose weight is never going to happen because they still have that story of the weight being their security blanket. So it doesn't matter how many diets they try. And you probably are in that boat too. So I'm very proud of you for seeing that. It's so important to recognize something like this. So you're already totally crushing it. And I'm thrilled to see that. But you are definitely still in that awareness stage. You still have quite a bit of digging to do to find out where all of this is coming from. So we really want to find out where that story came from and why you have it or had it. So I want you to ask yourself and do some work, get out your journal again, And really find the answers to these questions. Why do you feel the need to have that security blanket? What is it protecting you from? And in in a lot of cases, it's, you know, uh, they got made fun of or bullied as a child or they got unwanted attention at some point in their lives. And so using the security blanket then would prevent more attention like that from coming up for them, there's a story behind that story. So you still have more digging to do. And then the next stage of awareness is what do you want? And I don't know if you know that quite yet about yourself. What do you really want? Obviously, it sounds to me like you want to lose weight. You've been in a bigger body your whole life. You've been unhappy in that body your whole life. You've been working to change it for a very long time. Why? What are you hoping that body, that different body will bring? We have to really get to the bottom of this. And remember, it's an emotion. It sounds to me like it might be love, acceptance, joy, happiness, peace, really get to the bottom of what you want and why. So that emotion of what you want. What we're doing here is really getting your ego to take a back seat because right now it's really trying to take over and it's preventing you from truly tapping into your intuition. If we can take the time to quiet that ego, understand where it's coming from, what it's protecting you from, why it's trying to keep you safe, and we do this all in the awareness stage, it's going to be so much easier for you to really, truly find the voice of your inner self and work based on that. Now, the second piece of this, you also ask, who will I be when I lose weight? Hey, guess what? You need to find that person now. Don't wait until you lose weight to find out who you are. That happens right here, right now. No more waiting, okay? Who is Candy beyond her physical body and those external circumstances? So who are you beyond whatever you do for a living, uh, what, whether you're a partner or a mother or whatever else, however else you've been describing yourself. And again, this is going back to what we discussed last episode. We're kind of building on that and seeing it in real life here. What are you beyond that? Here are some questions, again, for that journal of yours. What is your purpose here in this lifetime? Why have you been given the opportunity of having a human experience? Why are you here? What is your purpose? What is your passion? What makes you lose track of time? Again, get out the journal. This actually may be a really good exercise for you to do with your intuition. So again, maybe get out some of that ego chatter And then get quiet and calm and meditate for a few minutes and then ask your intuition these questions and see what comes up. 
But what I really want for you with this right here, right now is to find yourself now, regardless of what your physical body is doing. Because then when it changes, it doesn't matter. When it changes either way, it's going to change. Every single one of our bodies changes every single day. We used to be children. We used to be babies. We are still the same person. Our bodies totally changed. Think about it that way. That is so such an interesting concept because we spend so much time on our physical form when that literally changes constantly. But who we are, our true inner being, our soul, our spirit, whatever that is for you, that does not change. So think about that, get in touch with that and find out who you are now. The last thing I want to touch on is the idea that her intuition is saying surgery is the answer. Your ego is the one saying that surgery is the answer because your inner you would absolutely never ever push you in the direction of harming your physical being. And weight loss surgery is extremely risky and has a very high rate of death post-surgery. Very few people go back to living a high-quality life after surgery, and your intuition does not want that for you. That is coming from your ego that is feeding into those stories that you haven't quite completely exposed yet and started the redesign process. So we're still in that phase, which means the ego is still going to be the louder voice. And just as a side note, if you don't believe me and you want to know more about the risks of surgery, there's a wonderful book called Health at Every Size by Dr. Linda Bacon that explains it all. I mean, it's a wonderful book about all basically health at every size, but it does go into the harm that bariatric surgery can and will do and the alarming rates of death that nobody talks about, but it's there in the research, but it's just hidden. Uh, That's just total side tangent there wonderful book if you're interested in that. And I think Candy would really benefit from reading that book. The last thing I want to do for Candy is provide maybe some guidance on what her intuition might sound like in this scenario. Now, of course, I don't know exactly what her intuition would say to her, but I did ask my intuition what I should tell you. And it came up with release yourself. I don't know exactly what that means. That is something that you will have to kind of dive into on your own. And that could even be something where you can, you know, do that whole practice of getting in touch with your intuition and ask, what does release yourself mean? And see what comes up or you may just know even just with me saying that uh, where that comes from what you need to release and so uh, I hope that helps but that is what I again did that exact process quieted my mind got into a nice peaceful calm place I have experience connecting with my intuition over the years so it's pretty easy for me to guide myself there and to find answers there. And that's what I got for you when I asked. I think your intuition would probably also want you to know that you are loved and worthy and beautiful right now as you are right this very moment. It probably would want you to love yourself and accept yourself and treat yourself really, really, really well right now. So that might be something that's trying to come through. Regardless, I want you to know that. I want all of you to know those words and to let those words soak in. And if those words impact you and you feel something, that is very similar to what it feels when you are listening to your intuition. 
it just feels right. Like, yes, I want to love and accept and treat myself really, really well. And I am loved and I am worthy and I am beautiful right now as we speak. And when you really absorb that, doesn't it just feel good and peaceful and right and loving and just wonderful? It just feels warm and good. And that is what will happen when you are truly connected with your intuition and listening to that inner you from deep within. All right, I hope that helps, Candy. As you can see, I really just want you to continue doing that awareness work. Really keep digging and digging on those stories that you have, find more answers for yourself and start the redesign process. You can go back to that episode on changing your limiting beliefs. I want to say episode nine or 11. I continuously get those ones mixed up and I don't know why. So go back. You can work on that if you're ready to redesign your limiting beliefs. And I think that's going to help you so, so much to really tap into your intuition. And the coolest thing is if you do this, if you work on that awareness work and then you work on tapping into your intuition and work on getting into alignment and doing something that feels really, really good for you and working on loving and accepting who you are now and finding yourself now, if you do all of that, just see what happens with your physical body. Just see. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen, but just see. Okay, do that work before you go the route of surgery. All right, I will chat with you all next week. And remember, if you want to be a part of the Unstuck Collective, I am currently taking founding members and I'd love to have you as one. Head to seanminer.com slash collective to save your seat. And until next time, take care. 